So iOS 16.1 Beta 1 just released to all developers just two days after iOS 16.0 made its actual public debut, and we already have a couple of changes and some nuances to make your life a little bit better, especially from a charging perspective. So without further ado, let's talk about all the changes Apple made with 16.1 compared to 16.0. Let's talk about it. So let's get right into the features and changes for iOS 16.1 Beta 1. So the first thing I like to do is actually look at how big the size of this update was. So you can see that we are at 5.13 gigabytes. So I know that it is huge, even though we're not gonna see a lot of feature improvements, and I just updated to iOS 16, because of the fact that we're going to a brand new 16.1, that means it's gonna be a brand new install. So if you are going into the beta program from 16, just make sure you have at least seven to 10 gigabytes of open storage in order to get this installed correctly. I like to give myself at least two times as much storage for the actual update. So five gigabytes, I would like to have 10 gigabytes of open storage in order to get it installed correctly. And the next thing that I like to check is actually the build number because it gives us an idea of maybe how many actual updates we're gonna get until we get the final release. So here's iOS 16.1 and we have 20B5045D. So what this actually tells us is that, so as we get closer to the release candidate in the public release, this D moniker at the very end will go lower and lower to C, B, A, and then finally it'll disappear totally. So expect to have maybe four to five betas before we get the public release in about a month to six weeks from now. So now let's talk about what's new with iOS 16.1. And this is all about features that are more quality of life kind of improvements versus actual feature sets that are gonna make a real day-to-day -day change in your everyday use. So the first thing that I wanna mention is actually in the battery. So if we go into battery and we go into the battery percentage, you can actually toggle that off and on. And I know that this came to iOS 16 to all newer iPhones, but it didn't come to the iPhone XR, the iPhone 11, or any of the 12s and the mini model. So the 12 mini and the 13 mini did not receive this until 16.1. So if you have an iPhone XR, iPhone 11, or any of the mini models, we now have the ability to turn on battery percentage, which is great to see because a lot of people complained that because they had a 13 mini, which is only a year old phone, they weren't getting the battery percentage, but now they are. So that is a new improvement and a new addition to the older models of iPhones. And then if you see in the battery, you can actually see this battery health and charging feature. So if you go down here, you see this clean energy charging, which is brand new. We've always had the optimized battery charging, but clean energy charging means in your region, iPhone will try to reduce your carbon footprint by selectively charging when lower carbon emission electricity is available. So it probably likes to charge your phone at night when not a lot of people are using power. Again, this is gonna be very region specific, so I'm sure in the US it'll come first, and then over time it'll start to go to other countries to again, lower your carbon footprint, which I'm all about, right? Making sure that we're getting the most out of our energy consumption and not taking up too much energy. So the next thing that we're gonna mention is with 16.0, we actually had the ability to get live activity. So if we go to, let's say your timer, and you press a five minute timer, and you actually go into your home screen or your control center or your notification center, this is a new live activity widget, which is gonna to start to trickle into all your different third-party applications. So right now there aren't too many to work from, but Apple is promising that you're gonna be able to check sports scores, you're gonna be able to see if your Lyft or your Uber is coming on time, all with just a little click of a button and a little widget on your actual lock screen, which is great to see. But if you go into your settings, and then you go to face ID and passcode, and then you scroll all the way down, you can actually see the toggle right here. So you have the live activities and the lock screen widgets. So you have the ability to actually turn that off if you don't want it on. Because I'm sure in the background it's gonna take up a little bit more battery when in use because you are you know, getting push data live onto your home screen or your lock screen with the live activities, but now you can turn that off if you don't wanna either waste battery or have these apps working in the background following your every move. And then this setting is actually also visible in the TV application, which is gonna work well, especially when you're watching sports. So if you go into Apple TV in your settings and then you go into this section right here, you can actually turn on live activities to get some sports scores if you are tracking those sports via the Apple TV app, which I do on occasion, and I'm very excited for Apple to A, get the MLS next year for the next 10 years, and hopefully they get the ability to buy DirecTV Sunday Ticket, which would be great for NFL games, because I know that Apple would do wonders with NFL Sunday Ticket over DirecTV. The next thing that I do wanna mention is if you take a screenshot, there's actually a new form of screenshot. So if I go into the screenshot that I just took, normally when I press done, on the bottom, these options are gonna show up on the iPhone. This new way of showing these options has actually been around for a while, but just on the iPad side, but now they brought it this way on the iPhone. So we did get this new ability to copy and delete the screenshot in 16.0, but now where it shows up is now different in 16.1, 
why Apple did that, I don't really know. Probably to take up less space on the phone itself because they figured they don't need to take up the entire bottom half of the iPhone screen to give you these options. So it's a welcome addition, nothing too crazy, more quality of life, like I mentioned. So the next one we're gonna talk about is actually shared photo library. So if you guys remember, Apple was touting this new photo library feature or the shared photo library feature for 16.0. Unfortunately, it didn't make it to the 16.0 update, but if we go into the photos settings, if I can find it, which is right here, you actually go down, you have shared library, and you get to start it and set it up. So this part is actually not brand new. This was actually in the 16.0 betas as we went along. So now when you go into your photos library, click on the three dots, you now have the ability to move that image into the shared library. And then anybody that you share that library with is gonna have access to those photos, which is great to see. So shout out Apple for hopefully bringing that over on 16.1 to the entire public. And then the last interesting one is actually for the wallet application. So if you guys notice, if you ever try to delete the wallet application from your iPhone, it doesn't let you. You can remove it from the home screen, but if you type in wallet right here, you hold down and you try to delete it, then it won't actually allow you to delete it, at least with 16.0 and lower. But now with 16.1, if you press delete app, you can actually delete it completely, which I'm not gonna do because I use it a lot of the time. But before you can only remove it from your home screen and now you can completely remove it from your iPhone. And Apple had to do that for legal reasons, I think. And again, it's just something that we noticed that we wanted to bring up to you. And those are all the new features with 16.1. Overall, the stability has been really, really good. No complaints, everything is working as it should be. And again, we're not gonna expect anything less because the 16.0 update in the beta was actually very stable from the very beginning. It was iPad OS 16, which was a little iffy. But the last thing that I do wanna show everybody, which I like to show off, is battery life. So let's see how my 13 Pro Max has been doing. This is a 13 Pro Max with 256 gigabytes of storage. So if we go into battery, let's go into battery health and charging. So you can see that I'm at 96% battery health after one full year of using this thing. And then the last 10 days, we're getting about nine hours and three minutes of screen on time which is a lot of screen on time. And in the last 24 hours, we're getting about eight hours and 43 minutes of screen on time, which is all fine and dandy. I mean, if you need to use your phone for longer than nine hours, then you know that's a tough one, but you can see that with nine hours and three minutes of average screen on time. And then we have days like Tuesday where it was 10 hours and 47 minutes, you know, 12 hours and 37 minutes, but then you have a day, you know, like Tuesday, it was only nine hours and two minutes or a day like Thursday, six hours and 22 minutes. So overall battery life has been absolutely amazing with iOS 16.1 and iOS 16 in all the betas and in the regular release. But that's gonna do it. Let's finish up this video and go to the normal view. So like everybody saw, iOS 16.1 beta one didn't bring any game changing features because again, iOS 16 just released and that was such a big feature set that again, what were they supposed to do to follow that up with 16.1? So this is more, again, we're tidying up everything. We're making things a little bit more better, more quality of life improvements like battery charging and optimization. So overall, it is a welcome upgrade and I'm sure Apple's going to iterate on 16.1 more and more before its actual official release. But that is gonna do it for this video, everybody. If you did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so that I know that you made it to the end. And definitely stay subscribed because we are testing iPadOS 16.1 beta 2 right behind me. And there are some improvements to Stage Manager that I wanna share, and we have a separate video coming out very soon all about Stage Manager, as well as some more iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Pro content. So leave some comments down below if you did update to 16.1, are you on 16.0 to begin with? How are you liking 16.0? Is all the customization and all those new feature sets worth it to you versus iOS 15? Let me know in the comments below, but if you guys wanna watch some more videos on iPadOS, iOS, and all the new iPhone content that's coming out soon, click on one of these videos right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.